Perfect. Okay. I'm Dr. Joshua Grenier, and this is baby Dr. Joshua Grenier. Would you like to introduce yourself? Well, hey there, world. I'm just a tiny version of Dr. Joshua Grenier, his right hand, um, little hand man, his sidekick, his mini-me of dental destruction, of cavities, that is, uh, ready to chew the fat about all things toothy. Oh, it's a wild tale. Okay, so we can talk about everything, but today I would like to talk about fluoride. It's in the news. It's hot. So let's start at the beginning. What is Rocky Mountain brown stain? Can you start with the history of fluoride? Back in 1901, a dentist named Frederick McKay stumbled upon the Rocky Mountain brown stain in Colorado Springs. Turns out these teeth were stained, but they were also like little superheroes against cavities. Fast forward to 1945, and Grand Rapids, Michigan, decided to inject some fluoride into their water to fight off tooth decay. By the groovy 60s, over 70% of the U.S. was sipping fluoridated water. Now, it's in everything from your toothpaste to your mouthwash, and probably even that fancy pink Himalayan salt you bought. That's awesome. It's everywhere. How long has there been controversy around fluoride? How long does that really go back? Oh, honey, this argument's been bubbling for about 80 years. The big question is whether fluoride in our water actually safe. Some folks get their knickers in a twist, worrying it'll turn their brains to mush or their bones brittle if they get too much. Mild fluorosis, which looks like tiny little white racing stripes on teeth, pops up in about one in four kids in fluoridated communities. Severe fluorosis? That's rarer, affecting less than 1% in superfluoridated areas, giving you tougher brownish stains and enamel that's, well, a bit wimpy. Okay, so there's a one in four risk of fluorosis. So break it down. What is the cumulative dose per day that would possibly be at risk for fluorosis? 0 0.1 milligrams of fluoride per kilogram of body weight per day. So, for a tiny three-year-old, that sweet spot where fluorosis risk starts is around 1.3 to 1.4 milligrams of fluoride per day. Quick napkin math says a three-year-old could be slurping down roughly 1.0 to 1.2 milligrams of fluoride daily. So, yeah, they're practically dancing on that fluorosis tightrope. But most three-year-olds can't really spit, so what if the parent was using a little bit too much toothpaste twice a day and the three-year-old was swallowing most of it, would that put them over the risk for fluorosis? If a three-year-old decides to go full-on toothpaste monster, swallowing most of it twice a day, they could definitely launch their daily fluoride intake right over that risk threshold. Okay. Uh, there is also a risk of getting fluorosis of skeletal structures as well. Skeletal fluorosis? It's less explored than its toothy cousin. But yeah, it's a known risk factor when you're getting bombarded with fluoride. So in addition to daily fluoride levels, so for a three-year-old, it can nudge above the risk of fluorosis, but it's going to reduce the caries risk. What is considered to be the uh, evidence level of fluoride lowering IQ uh, uh, of children when the mothers are exposed to fluoride? What's the evidence level there? The jury's still out, folks. The evidence linking fluoride to lower IQs in kids is still debated and frankly considered low to moderate. Don't throw out your toothpaste just yet. The 2024 report had a moderate confidence link between fluoride exposure above 1.5 milligrams per liter in drinking water and lower IQ in kids. But, and this is a big but, they found no solid evidence linking typical U.S. community water fluoridation levels to brain drain. Often does community fluoride spike? Does it go up above 0.7 or below 0.7 and how often? Phew, pretty consistent actually. About 16.3% of monthly measurements dipped below 0 0.6 milligrams per liter while a tiny 0.01% spiked above 2.0. Most of the time, 83.7% were chilling between 0.6 and 2.0 milligrams per liter, with the sweet spot being 0.7. So no wild fluoride roller coasters for most folks. Right, so it's a bit of a bell curve. Uh, that's interesting. So is it safe to say that fluoride makes a lot of sense and is very beneficial for some people, and maybe not so beneficial for others? You nailed it. Fluoride's a cavity-fighting champ, but too much of a good thing can lead to fluorosis. It's like chocolate. 
delicious, but don't eat the whole bar. Okay, so fluoride increases or decreases the chance of cavities by 20 to 30 percent, and that's increasing. What about flossing? How much does flossing decrease the risk of cavities? Flossing is legendary. It can slash cavity risk by 30 to 40 percent. And don't forget water picks. Those little jets can zap cavity risk by 20 to 30 percent. Oh, and tongue scrapers? Your breath and social life will thank you. Xylitol gum is practically a cavity fighting ninja. It can cut cavity risk by a whopping 30 to 60 percent. Chew on that, those little paintings of protection. They can reduce cavity risk by 30 to 40 percent, especially for our tiny humans and folks who are cavity magnets. It's got a mouthful of a name, but it delivers. This toothpaste can actually match or even outshine fluoride in remineralization. Pretty amazing stuff. Fluoridated mouth rinses can drop cavity risk by 20 to 30 percent. Even the non-fluoridated ones can chip away 10 to 20 percent of your cavity risk. Every little bit helps. Absolutely. Okay, what about dietary recommendations? What about cutting out soda and cutting out uh, even and, and other sources of acid? How much does that reduce caries risk? Kicking soda and other acidic drinks to the curb can slash cavity risk by 20 to 40 percent. And if you pair that with cutting down on sugary snacks, you'll be practically invincible against cavities. So, fluoride may not be right for everybody. And how many things are roughly as good as systemic fluoride? You got it. Fluoride's a dental superhero, but too much can lead to some not-so-super fluorosis. The great news is we've got a whole squad of alternatives. Flossing, water picks, xylitol gum, fluoride varnishes, nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste, and even those swishy fluoridated mouth rinses. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so much for coming and talking to me today. That concludes it. Precisely. It's all about that holistic dental swagger.